Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you're watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the eighth video of our newly created technical series, ServiceNow Developer. So in my last video, we have understood a very, very important and very common client side API, which is the Glide form. And I've shown you that how they, how Glide form works, what are the different methods of Glide forms. So how you can customize your forms, you know, by adding maybe icon, setting a field mandatory, setting a field read only, changing the color of a field, different things that you can do with the help of the Glide form methods, right? And I hope you enjoyed the video. But if you missed that video, don't worry, I'm going to put the link in the description. And also you can find the link here on your screen, right? So today we are going to learn about another client side API, which is the Glide user. So again, very important API. And also today we are going to see in the practical that how we can use Glide user and Glide form together inside of the client script. And I, I'll show you based on some certain scenario based things. Okay. And it's going to be very, very interesting. So make sure you watch the full video again in upcoming videos when we will deal with the client script. So we would do different scenario based stuff. So there we need to use these APIs right glide form glide user and i'm also thinking to cover few more important apis in next few videos and then we can jump into the client script all right so i hope you are ready so let's go to my personal developer instance and let's start the glide user all right so i'm in my personal developer instance so as you know like for glide form also uh, we cannot use uh, this client side api rather i cannot show you client side api inside of the background script so this is only for the server side stuff so in the last video also i used the client script i created a client script and there i have shown you how things are working and today also i'll do the same before going into the glide user let me tell you glide user is again uh, you know like glide form it is uh, it has a object global object that is the g underscore user okay so again, that means the object is already created inside of the class. So we just call the object and use different methods. Just to tell you that Glide user is also having some properties. So in the class and object video, uh, which is there in my you know ServiceNow and JavaScript playlist. So I have shown you or I have rather explained you that uh, you know there are properties and methods. Both is part of the class, right? So a class have properties, a class have methods also right so now we will see in glide user we are going to use some properties as well we are going to use some methods okay and it's going to be very very interesting and very very useful so let's start a client script and let's start exploring the uh, glide user all right so i think the last client script that we have created uh, called test it's already there so i'm not going to create a new one maybe i'm going to use uh, in that one only so this is a test one so i'll open it all right so here we are going to write the uh, glide user stuff Again, Glide user can only be used inside of client script and also in UI policy, also in UI action, uh, which is based on client side. Okay, uh, but remember, you cannot use Glide user inside of the server side. So let me tell you a very informative information that this, whatever we are going to use with the help of the Glide user, like user's first name, logged in user first name, last name, we will get the full name, uh, even the user ID, sys ID. So all this information can be get from the session current session that user is logged in. So actually it stores in the browser, client script works in the browser level. So it very easily get those information. So if you remember when we learned about the Glide system, so we learned that Glide system is also, it, it was a service side, server side API. And with the help of Glide system, we get the system information as well as the user information. So there was a method called Glide system or the gs.getuser. So that was a method. And by using that method, we calling other method like gs.getuser, uh, then dot, get username or get display name or has role we have learned those things right so those things were i i told you that those things are coming from a different api called client user so this is the same api so from server side we access those client information that what is the user's full full name and different roles what user has so we access through this api on the glide user right i hope this concept clears we use glide system in the server end and we directly going to use glide user in the client end okay so first Let's discuss about some properties of the Glide user. So we will start with G underscore user. Uh, again, this is a global object and we can get the first name and we don't need to use the method because first name is not a method. This is a property. So directly we can do like this. So I want to see in, you know, in printing so that we can get the first name. So, so I'll do another uh, API method. That is the Glide form that you have learned in the last class. Uh, add info message. Okay. And here I'm going to use g, g, g underscore user dot first name, this property. Okay. So I'll copy this so that I can show you the rest of the property. 
So next we have the g underscore user dot last name. So we will see the output uh, at the end. So last name, okay. Then again, next property that we have. Okay, next we can use, let's first deal with the property. So you can see if I just uh, go on, on different methods and properties, it is showing all the, you know, you can see this is the sign of property. And this is a kind of a box sign, which is for the methods. Okay, so we are gonna use the user ID. Okay, and then finally, I think this is the username that we have. Remember the difference between user ID and username. Try to guess it. I'll show you in the output in a minute. So username, that's the another property. Okay, so now before I show you in the output again, I will uh, print it. And this time I'm going to use one of the method, which is the get full name. Okay, this is a method and if it's a method, I have to give a sign like this open parenthesis and close parenthesis sign of a method. Okay, so I'm going to save it. It's the onload function in the incident table. So I need to open the incident table here in the other tab and you can see when I load the incident form in the other tab, I am getting the output. So this is a first name system, last name administrator. This is the user ID and this is the username and this is a full name. So you know that user ID is this is ID. And username is the username of the admin. So now you are able to relate with the uh, the Glide system method, right? GS dot get user and then get first name, get user ID, has role. All these methods are similar. This is coming from the Glide user API only. Okay, so now we will deal with some roles method. Okay, so I'll remove this thing. And now before I'll deal with the role method, three method we are, that we are going to learn today. Uh, that is the GS dot first has role method, then has roles with a S, then has role exactly. And I think there's one more method. Uh, so that would be total four method has role from list. Okay. And which is very, very important. So I'll show you all of them uh, one by one. Okay. But before that, I want to create a role first. So you know that how to create a role very simply. So I'll open another tab. So I want you to clear the difference between has role, has roles, and also has role exactly and has role from list, how differently it works. So uh, maybe I'll go to the roles table. So sys underscore user underscore role a dot list. Okay, I'm gonna create a new role. And maybe I'm gonna name it as demo one. That's it. Okay, and I'm gonna save it. That's it. And now this role is not assigned to anyone. Okay. So first I'm going to show you the method called G underscore user has role. And let's let's go with a scenario this time. So what I want is that uh, if the user has the demo one role, if any user has the demo one role, then only this description field will be visible for them. Otherwise, this description field will not be visible for anyone. Okay. So first, what we need to do first, we need to set this description field as read only because without demo one role, no one will be able to edit it. Okay. So first what I'm going to do by default, g underscore form dot set read only. Again, I have explained this in my last video. The field name would be description. And I'm going to make it yes. I'm uh, sorry, the true Boolean value. So it would be read only. This is by normal. Now, what I want is that if g underscore user, I'm going to use the method called has role method. So now I have to give the role name. So the role name is demo one. That's what we decided, right? So demo one. So if the current login user has the role demo one, then the description field read only become false, right? G underscore form dot set read only and it would become false for the description field false. Okay. If the user doesn't have this role, then um, it should not be working, right? So that's it. I'm going to save it. Okay, quickly, I want to open the user table. Uh, I want to show you the role of the administrator, system administrator by which I'm logging right now. So you can see this is the uh, system administrator. So if I open it, uh, you can see this is all the details. And if I go to the roles, I have 31 roles, but there is no demo one role, right? There is no demo one role. So now that means I won't be able to see it, right? So let's add the demo one role quickly. Let's do that first. So demo one. Demo one, let's add it because as per the criteria, I had have to have the demo one rule so that I can edit the description field. Okay. Now demo one rule is added here. So first I will turn off this, uh, this if uh, part because I want to show you that first description is not editable for anyone. 
so if i just refresh it you can see description is non editable only it will be editable if the logged in user has the demo one role so now we have given the logged in user which is the currently is the system administrator the demo one role so now if i save the client script now i should be able to edit the description so refresh it you can see i can edit the description because i have the demo one role now i'll show you the cool things i'll go back again and i will edit the role tab and i will remove the demo one from the system administrator i only have the admin and security admin role i'll save it okay now i should not be able to edit this part right let's refresh it and you can see still i am able to edit this part how it's possible so now let me explain you so this method actually returns true if the user has the following role or the user has the admin role so now i logged in as a security admin right system administrator so i have the admin role so so this is working for me so the description is becoming false and i am able to edit description but if i test with any other user it won't be editable so let's use so let's try with the other user so maybe i'll impersonate it with the user and it has to have the itil role so so i'll go to itil user and i'll impersonate it and it has the itil role so now if i refresh it it doesn't have the demo one role so and user won't be able to edit the description field you can see it's not editable for the itil user so that means again g underscore user has role method only returns true if the user has the mentioned role or if the user has the admin role suppose the situation is that you want if only the user is having demo one role then only user would be able to edit the description it doesn't matter user is admin or not so if user is admin also then also user won't be able to edit it if the user if the admin user doesn't have the demo one role in that case we use another method that is the has role exactly so by the name exactly you can understand that user has to have the exactly demo one role right so if i now refresh it i mean save it now i logged in as a system administrator and i do not have the demo one role but i'm using the has role exactly method so i won't be able to edit this so if i refresh it you see i'm an admin but still i'm not able to use it so now you know the difference between has role and has role exactly again i would request you to practice it in your uh, pdi uh, you know like the way i did more, maybe you can add more condition and more different stuff okay so that's the has role and has role exactly also we have the has role from list method so has role from list method actually work you will define some role here maybe itil or something uh, maybe some other roles maybe security admin so it will return true if user has any of the role from the list so you want maybe certain scenario that if user is having any of the role from the mentioned list then user would be able to uh, edit the description field okay uh, okay i don't need to make it separate but it would be as a you know single uh, invited so it's like that okay so it should be like that so if i save it so now uh, i will make it to itil user again to check so itil user is having the itil role but demo one and security admin is not there so as per the as per the rules uh, if user has any mentioned role any of the role then user would be able to access the description field so i will make it so now i logged in with it user so i'll go here i'll refresh it and i should be able to edit it you can see because it user has having one of the role so there is another method called has roles which is uh, very important again and has roles runs return true if user is having any method any sorry any role sorry not method any role if it's there so i'm still log in with uh, it user so okay i won't be able to edit this client script so i make the impersonation end okay and has roles so it doesn't accept any parameter so you can see so if user is having any role then the description would become true so fine i'll again switch back to it user so this is how you have to practice it also in your pdi to understand this you know glide user different methods right
And trust me, when we'll deal with complex client script, when what we will going to see in upcoming videos, there you would need to use this uh, methods, right? So here, so I'm now in ideal user and I again should be able to edit this field because I have at least uh, some roles in my table. Okay, so this is how it works. So these are the all different methods and properties of the Glide user. So there are uh, set client data and get client data. Two methods are there, which I want to discuss in separate videos when we'll deal with how we can connect with client to server. Also get reference is a method which we can use from G underscore form that I have not described because I'll do in a separate video. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Again, practice all these things and trust me, it's going to be very, very useful. So in next video, I'm going to use, uh, so I'm going to discuss about uh, two or three more APIs. Uh, client side api that's gonna help you a lot while dealing with client script so i want to make it clear i'm gonna give you all the weapon before we will fight for the client script scenario okay so if you find this video helpful hit the like button if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section and don't forget to share this video with your friends and families so that it can reach out to many people don't forget to follow my insta channel for tech tips and the technical reels and post and also subscribe my channel see you in my next video bye bye take care